Is this body of water in Cornwall the home of the mythical Lady of the Lake? The lake is Dosmery Pool on Bodmin Moor, one of the sources of the River Foy. It has been significant to people since prehistory, with the antiquarian and folklorist Sabine Bering Gould saying it was abundant in fish and surrounded by numerous remains of Stone Age flint working. Dosmery Pool is one site that is claimed to be the watery residence of the Lady of the Lake. According to legend, Arthur, King of the Britons, rode out to the Lady of the Lake, sometimes called Nimue, and received the magical sword Excalibur at Dosmery Pool. After Arthur was mortally wounded at the Battle of Cam Lan, the blade was said to have been returned to the water by Bedivere. The act of deposition of sacred or valuable objects, particularly arms alluded to in the legend, recalls a very real religious and cultural practice. At the time Arthur is supposed to have lived, there were still practitioners of druidic belief, or at least those with knowledge of them. Added to this, there is also the possibility that Merlin, described perhaps colloquially or cryptically as a bard, was a druid. Druids, known to the classical world from the 4th century BC, could have continued traditions and practices from as far back as the 2nd and 3rd millennia BC. In this context, deposition to the Chthonic deities took place in the earth or bodies of water. Examples of earth deposition include pits at Woodhenge or Durrington Walls near Stonehenge or the Stone Circle and Henge at Avebury. The concept can be seen as being continued into the Bronze and Iron Ages in the form of grave goods deposited in burial mounds. Objects deliberately placed in water include the ornate Battersea Shield and the Waterloo Bridge Helmet, as well as the far older Dagenham Idol. The deposition of votive objects and also defixiones, or requests for divine damnation of enemies, also took place in the sacred waters of Bath. These were offerings or appeals to the deity Shulish, later amalgamated with the Roman goddess Minerva, to form the compound deity Shulish Minerva via the process of Interpretatio Romana. A rich earth deposition was discovered in Folly Lane, St Albans, Hertfordshire in 1991-92, which was part of the burial rites of a late Iron Age Catavalloni chieftain. The complexity of the funerary chamber, burial mound and enclosure at the site pointed to complicated rituals having taken place. It was determined the site was the tomb of a client king who died in the years immediately following Rome's invasion of Britain in AD 43. Treasures discovered with the cremated body included enamelled horse equipment, a chariot, a tunic of iron mail armour and at least 15 pounds of silver. It was said that all the grave goods were burned on the funeral pyre with the body. David Thorold, curator prehistoric to medieval at Verulamium Museum, said of the discovery, The whole site is exceptional. The evidence of an elaborate ritual, the imposing character of the enclosure and its position overlooking the Roman town, the wealth of the grave goods and the fact that a Romano-Celtic temple was subsequently built on the site of the funeral pyre are all proof that the rites and ceremonies performed here were of overwhelming significance to the local population. Returning to Dosmery Pool, it is clear that this atmospheric location within the ruggedly beautiful Bodmin Moor is the kind of place that should attract association with legends, and so it is that the lake is also linked to a sinister deal with the devil. The tall tale goes that Jan Tregeagle, a 17th century steward and cruel magistrate under the Duchy of Cornwall, was on the trail of deviant activities when he made a so-called Faustian pact with Satan to gain wealth and influence. The deal dictated that on his death Tregeagle would be damned to forever attempt to empty the allegedly bottomless Dosmery pool with a leaky limpet shell. But in death as in life, Tregeagle was not a man to discharge his duties faithfully. He was said to have escaped from his endless task, fleeing to Rosh Rock with demons giving chase, before being set another impossible task. This time he had to weave ropes from sand. Tales abound that Tregeagle's tormented ghost still wails across Bodmin Moor. Whatever the truth or allegory of these tales, their very existence proves a spiritual and potentially historical significance for this eerie place. Is it the home of the Lady of the Lake? Who knows, but it's as good as any. That's it for this video. Don't forget to like, share and most importantly subscribe. And thank you for watching.